Hello, welcome back to my channel and today I want to talk about the top 10 fantasy books I have read in the year 2020. I am going to be doing December 2019 up to December 2020 is like my year for ranking books and so next year it'll December 2020 reads that I have not read yet will be included in next year's ranking. So any of these books here, they are what I've read in the last 12 months. So I'm going to rank them from 10 to 1 and let's see this was like a really hard list for me to make i love fantasy it's my primary genre these are all adult fantasy i'm gonna have a different top 10 for young adults but let's let's get into this list so starting at number 10 we have the priory of the orange tree i have a review for this if you want a lot of in-depth thoughts but basically this was a really fun standalone epic fantasy where we kind of get to follow a whole world figure out how they're going to deal with the return of a darker force. And we get that from East and West perspectives, and they both have different relationships with dragons and magic. And we have a lot of fun character perspectives. If you like sapphic books, that is definitely what this is. And it was just a really fun time. I was actually quite apprehensive about it when I picked it up earlier this year for the BookTube SFF Awards. I was like, this book looks really long. I hope I get along with the writing style because I don't mind long books. But if the writing styles are uh, rough for me, it, it can be a slog. But this was not a slog at all. I just thought it was really fun. I don't know if I'll ever reread it, but it was definitely worth mentioning on this list. Number nine is The Shadowed Sun by N.K. Jemisin. I got to read the rest of N.K. Jemisin's backlog this year. I read the Broken Earth trilogy in 2019. And The Shadowed Sun is the second book in the Dreamblood duology and I love it. I have a review for the Dreamblood duology. Again, if you want to know more, you're, this is going to be a theme. I tend to review the things I like because I want more people to read them. But this is a series that's based off Egyptian mythology. There's dream magic. The first book follows some gatherers who are people who can basically send people off in their dreams. So them basically euthanizes them and takes their dream blood and can use that to heal others. So this is typically done voluntarily, but also if you are someone who is against the peace of the land, um, you're considered corrupt, evil, this is also a way that this area does performs its justice. So that's where the first book takes place, and then the second book happens after the events of the first book and has one of my favorite female characters of all time. She's trying to make it in a man's profession, she's trying to be true to herself, and it feels like that's a theme for me this year in reading. I really loved the theme of trying to balance your culture and yourself and where you fit in. It's been really great. So that's The Shadowed Sun. I really loved it. Um, I will say that I'm pretty sure the Dreamblood duology, or at least The Killing Moon, was the first book she ever wrote. So if you start there, it I mean, her world building, it's the same as in any book. So if you're like turned off by how she chooses to give you world building, that doesn't change. But her character work vastly improves from The Killing Moon to The Shadowed Sun, and that's why that one is the one that made it to this list. Number eight is Jade City, which is this urban fantasy that I've been hearing so much about this year, and I was really hoping I'd like it, and I did. It's so cool. Like, it's, it's pretty dark. Um, it's very character-driven, and I don't wouldn't say it's like super fast-paced plot, but it also has amazing action scenes, and I don't really know how to describe it. You just have these two warring factions who can both use jade and jade is like this magic system that's very synonymous with drugs um you can go overboard with it some people are insensitive to it we kind of get to look at all different sides of one's interaction with the substance of jade and jade makes you very powerful it can make you faster it can make you stronger it, it it's a really interesting drug and when you do get to see it used it's, it's pretty cool. So I'm very excited to get to Jade War. That's coming up. Jade War probably would have made this list if I had had a chance to read it, but Jade City is the one I've gotten to read and I really liked it and I'm really excited because like I said in a previous wrap-up, Fonda Lee really made me understand a character who is objectively not like a nice guy <laughs> and that's just, it's really impressive. Number seven is another N.K. Jemisin. I'm sure we're all shocked that N.K. Jemisin is going to feature prominently on this list, but it's The Broken Kingdoms, the second book in the Inheritance trilogy. Uh, I really like this trilogy, and I really love the second book, where we follow Ore, who is a blind street artist, and basically she stumbles upon this man in a dumpster one day and decides to take care of him and... The journey ensues from there. I can't really talk about much because it's based off stuff that happens in the first book and the world is honestly quite complex. 
but I really, really liked it. And I cannot wait to reread that trilogy next year because I just, I need to, I really liked it. And I really liked the second book. Number six is Redemption in Indigo. And this is a book that shocked me. It completely blew me away. It's by Dr. Karen Lord. She is from Barbados. And this is basically a folk tale based off Caribbean mythology. And it's hysterical. It is so funny. I was laughing and smiling while I read this story. It's about Pama, who is trying to get away from her glutton of a husband. So she runs away to home. Her husband follows her, gets into all all this mischief. Meanwhile, these spirits and gods are interacting with Pama to try and give her a chaos stick. And then the indigo lord is like, where's my chaos stick? It's just, it's great. <laughs> I mean, that's all I'll say. It's just, it's just a really fun folklore story with a lot of Caribbean influence. I found it really funny. It's very short and I cannot wait to reread it. You guys should all read it. It's fantastic. Don't look at the American cover. I feel like the American cover makes it feel more serious than it is. It is very thematically like lush, but it is not like, it's not as serious as that cover shows. Like I'm picking the um, UK cover because it's the one I really like. And it really inspires, I feel like that storytelling vibes that this, this story gave me. Number five is Middle Game by Shannon McGuire. This book, I thought I was not going to like this book. I'll be real. I didn't have high expectations. It didn't look like it was for me. I don't know. I think it was just the hand on the cover. I was just not feeling that cover. Never let a cover tell you what you will and won't like. I'm learning that every year. <laughs> but Middle Game is about these the sibling relationship and they are basically two halves of a deity because of alchemy and they get separated from birth but kind of have this quantum entangled brain and they kind of discover each other as their invisible friends growing up and their relationship is why I love this story. Um, the actual plot itself, I couldn't remember or tell you much about it, but their relationship and the feelings I had as they found and lost each other again, oh, so good. Plus it is a non-linear storytelling structure and I am a sucker for that. So the combination of those two things and a very accessible writing style made it a favorite of the year and I had a, a pretty great time. Number four would be the conclusion to the Davabad trilogy, Empire of Gold. Oh, so good. Such a good ending. I really want to own these books, but I don't like the American covers. And I don't want to spend the money on the UK covers. I'm at an impasse. The Davabad trilogy is about three people, Nari, Dara, and Ali, and how they interact with the politics and magic of Davabad, basically. Um, Nari is from Cairo, and she basically has always had a knack with some light magic. She always just thought they were nice tricks and then finds out one day she's part Nahid and gets taken to Davabad by Dara. Dara is a very old warrior and Ali is the prince of Davabad at the time, but he is from a different family to um, Nari, who used to be the ruling class. And there's just all this politics and all this Middle Eastern like lore and magic and the characters and the relationships are just so good. Oh, it was really good. I really liked it. I thought everything that happened was earned. I didn't feel anything was rushed. I I loved all three of these books and The Empire of Gold was no exception. So that's why it's number four. Number three is the last N.K. Jemisin on this list and that is The City We Became. I have a review for this if you want to watch it. It's also Baby Angela on booktube. So if you really want to see me back then. I really love the city we became. Um, this is a love letter to New York City where New York City is going to be born. Cities can be born after a certain amount of time and when they do they acquire usually an avatar. But New York City is so diverse, so complex, it acquires six. And when it's born it's a complicated birth and it's about these avatars figuring out that they are avatars and interacting with each other to try and defeat the big bad. It's kind of very I don't know, I feel like people do have issues with reading it, but for me, I found it very accessible. It's definitely a soft magic system with a lot of sci-fi elements, which I am very into. I love her writing style. That's no different in this story. And I've just, I had so much fun reading it. I had a great time buddy reading it with a friend. I've had friends back home read it and I've been talking to them about it. We all have our least favorite and favorite characters. I have great memories with this book and I love N.K. Jemisin's writing. <laughs> So obviously number three is an appropriate spot for it. Now these last two are hard. 
was writing this list last night and I, I left them blank because I know what the two books should be, but I don't know <laughs> which one goes where. So I'm going to give them numbers, but know that on any given day this could be switched, okay? Any given day. This is really, really hard. So I am going to say that number two, oh gosh, I have to go on gut right now. Yeah, number two is Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. Whew, I just did a bunch of spoiler vlogs. I'm still pretty close to finishing it. Like I'm three days after finishing it. It was everything I wanted a Stormlight book to be. For me, this is a great Stormlight book. Uh, it, was, it was just so good. This is the fourth book in the Stormlight Archives. The Stormlight Archives is a book about a bunch of people realizing the apocalypse is happening while they're fighting petty battles, realizing magic's entering the world and figuring out how to use that magic figuring out how to work together, even though culturally and socio societally they are all on separate ends of the spectrum. And yeah, that's all I can really say about that series. It is about 5,000 pages long now. I really don't know what I'm allowed to tell you anymore. That's not a spoiler. But I love it. It's one of my favorite ongoing series of all time. And this book just like, where are we going from here? I have guesses, but there are lots of things I don't know. Like there are six more books planned. And I am so intrigued. <laughs> but that was, it was really hard not to make that my number one because I feel like recency bias is what makes it the number one potentially. And I, time will tell, but I do believe number one has to go to the Sword of Cayenne. The Sword of Cayenne, again, I, I have a, a video for that. Probably by now, they're all just linked in the description because I've up, used up all the five things were allowed up there. But the Sword of Cayenne... <laughs> was a book that was so emotional for me, I had to put it down for a day. Books don't do that to me. I am a heartless person when I read books. I typically only get emotional during musicals, but The Sword of Cayenne, it broke me in a good way. Like I love a good emotional roller coaster. Like that's why I'm here for stories. That's why I consume stories, whether that's in musicals or movies or TVs or books. Like I want to be emotionally invested and have my heartstrings pulled. And Sword of Cayenne did that to the max. I also love that it's a complete story. I love what the story's about. I know that narratively, not everyone loves the structure. Not everyone loves that its peak or climax doesn't happen right at the end. For me, I've kind of gotten burnt out a little bit on climaxes happening right at the end. Like, I used to love that. Like, I mean, I still love a good Sanderlanch, but I don't know, there's something about having a peak happen early and then you get to deal with the repercussions. This is probably just the me getting older thing, but I really liked that in the story. And I haven't told you what the Sword of Kaigen is about, but it's about this place called the Sword of Kaigen and we follow two characters, Misaki and Mamuro. Mamuro is a 14 year old boy who's very good at his family's water bending type skills. They are masters at their craft and he is very powerful, but he's also really awesome and not very arrogant and really willing to learn and take critique. I love Mamuro. And Misaki is this woman who is a basically a noble woman in this circle. She's supposed to raise children, kind of be more docile, but she has a past that's a little more fiery and we get to learn about that and what skills she has and what she hides from her family. And I love it. I really love that story. The more I think about this story, the more I hear critiques that other people have about that story, the more I'm like, but for me, that is like, this is like one of the most perfect books written for me. So that's why it had to be my number one of the year. I was also surprised at how much I liked it. Like I thought I would. A lot of the people who have similar tastes to me liked it, but it was so hyped. So I was like, there's no way I like it as much as the internet. That's not how this works. No, I, I like it as much as the internet. I'm, I'm basic and that is totally fine. So these are my top 10 adult fantasy books of the year. What is your number one? Or do you have a similar problem to me in that you have two that are basically neck and neck? Because that's an issue. And otherwise, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.